So let me start over. Welcome to the Community Mushroom Educator Training, or as we all like to call, uh, CME. Uh, we're here this afternoon to share with you the outline of the program and answer any questions you might have um, as you consider being a participant. And we're all grateful uh, for your uh, showing up today or watching this recording if at a later date. Um, all the information about this project, the application link, uh, the recording of this presentation, and an introductory video that we also made for the project can all be found in one place, and that's smallfarms.cornell.edu backslash projects backslash mushrooms backslash CME. This is a project that's a partnership of the Cornell Small Farms Program, uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension Harvest New York, Farm School NYC and Just Food, who are all participating to deliver the material here. So to get started, uh, our homepage uh, for all things mushroom uh, with the Small Farm uh, Project and uh, expanding beyond the bounds of this, this one uh, education project we're working on, I uh, just want to point you to cornellmushrooms.org, where you'll find a whole bunch of uh, resources and information about cultivation, about the economics and markets, and also ways to connect to fellow growers, connect to our extension uh, resources, um, find a supplier directory, and join our listserv. And we'll share some more information at the end of the presentation about how to stay in touch. But this is sort of our hub for the project and all things specialty mushrooms. And just to clarify, because folks ask, um, the USDA defines specialty mushrooms as any mushroom other than uh, the button mushroom, which would include the white button mushrooms, the creminis, and the portobellos. So those are all one species. And those are predominantly produced um, by larger, mid-sized mid to larger operations, mostly in Pennsylvania and California. So our focus with this extension project is on the lesser known or uh, the specialty mushrooms, so everything else. Uh, and so this website and our extension project focuses on those mushrooms and helping small farms get started in commercial production. So our project is, is two faceted uh, as a whole. We do uh, research to uh, understand the parameters for good cultivation, for successful cultivation, to understand the economics so that we can provide the information to growers and help them uh, make good decisions about their enterprises. Uh, on the website, we have a lot of different ways that we share that information, whether it's a printed publication, uh, an article, or a blog post that you can read online. We have a series of videos, both that you can link to from our website, as well as through the Cornell Small Farm Program YouTube site. Uh, one link here I'll point you to is our series of monthly webinars that you can find archived from 2019. If you follow that link on the slide, which is just tinyurl.com backslash mushroom webinars. So there's a whole bunch of good information there about the larger project and about mushroom growing in general. We'd like to also get out from underneath the screen and, uh, and interact with folks. So there's a picture there on the slide of us doing a workshop this past summer um, in Brooklyn where we worked with folks uh, to inoculate and talk about the cultivation process and the business prospects of specialty mushrooms um, in an urban context. Uh, so we do hands-on workshops. Uh, we're also doing research actively on Cornell campus, again, to do some uh, production uh, data collection and, and hopefully pass that on as a way to understand better how to start a good, successful mushroom business. So we have a, a mixed bag here of research and education. We're here to help and here to support. So the CME training, uh, we are grateful to Northeast SARE, which is our funder for this project. And that is a, a project, the SARE is a project of the USDA um, at large. Uh, and so we were awarded this grant, uh, it's a two year grant. And our uh, goal in this process is to um, uh, engage with community members and essentially train more mushroom educators as we uh, move along in the process. One of the reasons that we identified a need for this was uh, the overwhelming response or, or inquiries that we get about doing mushroom workshops, the overwhelming interest in classes that we are able to hold, and we just aren't able to simply meet that need um, with a small staff. Uh, so we want to expand that knowledge and make sure it's getting out to lots of different folks all over the place. We also know that uh, in different communities, uh, the folks that live in those communities, work in those communities, are more suited to actually educate other members of those communities in something such as mushroom education. So our long-term vision is that we have a network of educators 
that are versed in mushroom production and can work together. And if folks can let me know in the chat, sounds like we're only seeing the homepage slide. You're not actually seeing my slides advance. Is that true? Because then we need to figure that out. Doo -doo -doo. They should be seeing my slides moving here. Let me see if I can switch the share. Let's try. Okay. That's so better, you Steve. See? You can see it now? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. All right, well, I'll go back just for folks on the video here. We just had a picture of the website. I was talking about the website, talked about our extension project here and shared that link for the webinars and about our workshop in Brooklyn. And then here we are with the training info. So thanks for that. So Northeast SARE, our sponsoring uh, agency. So this two-year grant is a partnership between these four organizations where we're actively working on different aspects of this, of this project. So our goal is to get 60 educators both in urban and rural spaces, educated and teaching mushrooms in their communities. So we do have a website for the project. I mentioned uh, the URL at the top of the webinar. You can also find it by going to the Cornell Small Farm website. Uh, sometimes people just like to Google that, or you can go to smallfarms.cornell.edu. And if you look under our projects page, you'll find specialty mushrooms, and then you'll see a link at the top. It's a blue button that says Community Mushroom Educator Training. And on that page, you'll find a full description of this project. It'll be a recap of all the things we cover in this webinar. That's also where you find the link to our online application and to some videos that will share more information about the project. We do encourage if you're going to apply to understand all the pieces, read through the website, watch all the videos, ask any questions ahead of time. Um, and then uh, recommended is to also download the questions and answer them uh, in the application you know, to your computer before submitting, just in case anything happens with the form. The application form is set up so that with your email, you should be able to actually revisit and even edit the form. But just in case anything happens, um, it's good to, to work on it offline first or outside of the form. And there's a link on the directions of the application in order for you to do that. So. Just keep, make sure to read through everything as you, as you go. We do have a, a video introducing the project as well as all the partners, but we're gonna do some of that in person right now. And so you can find that uh, through the website or on the YouTube link in the slide here. So I'll just mention that in addition to the sort of uh, main partners, we have our Cornell partners, the Small Farm Program and CCE Harvest New York. Our main partners in this phase of the project are Farm School NYC as well as Just Food. Uh, we have a, a wider network though that I always like to acknowledge because what's wonderful about the mushroom industry, uh, whether it's growers or suppliers or nonprofits and educational institutions, is it's a very cooperative uh, uh, network. And so um, I just wanna acknowledge some of our partners that uh, sometimes provide us products, but everyone's invested in education, everyone's invested in seeing everyone succeed and learn and grow. This is a pretty young and new industry. Um, we have growers maybe in the hundreds, mostly small scale growers around the US and, um, and we're excited to see it grow and, and everyone's sort of working on the same team, I think, uh, working in that, in that direction. So just wanna acknowledge some of these folks. Um, anyone who's accompanying here is in our supplier directory on the cornellmushroom.org website. So I'll introduce myself uh, as part of the project and then we'll just kind of pass the baton here with some of the other folks uh, on the, the webinar today. So my name is Steve Gabriel. Uh, I work for Cornell Small Farms where I've developed uh, the extension program. Uh, I originally uh, was uh, able to work at Cornell under uh, Professor Ken Mudge, who really was the sort of founder of the mushroom uh, effort here on campus. Uh, his research over 15 years established a lot of what we know about outdoor forms of mushroom production what types of woods we can grow on, what types of conditions they need, what types of mushrooms are most successful. And we really established a lot of baseline understanding. And we're now in the past few years moving into also looking at indoor cultivation and sort of uh, everywhere in between uh, growing in the woods and growing uh, indoors. And so, uh, so we're really trying to develop and, and expand um, our understanding and then share that information with the wider community. Uh, I also, with my wife, co-own uh, Wellspring Forest Farm, which is in Mecklenburg, New York, just outside Ithaca, right in the middle of the state, essentially, where we do actually uh, a hybrid indoor-outdoor production system and grow somewhere between 50 and 150 pounds a week. So 
I do speak as an educator working for extension, but also as a farmer myself. I'll pass the mic to Yolanda. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Yolanda Gonzalez and I am an urban ag specialist with Cornell Cooperative Extension. I'm based here in Brooklyn in Fort Greene. Um, also co-located with the New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets. And um, I'm part of a the Harvest New York team of specialists. So that includes other areas like dairy food processing, local food distribution and marketing, urban ag, farm-based beverages, emerging crops, and farm strategic planning. Um, it's an eight-member uh, team, and we just actually hired um, a dairy specialist onto our team, so now we've expanded to nine. And um, I mostly work with commercial urban growers, providing technical assistance and educational programming. Like Steve mentioned, we've hosted a series of workshops here in the city. Um, the upper right-hand corner was actually from a workshop in the Bronx. Um, not last summer, but the summer before. So I'll pass it on. Um, I'll actually say a few words if you want to scroll to the next slide. Steve. So Just Food is also another partner of ours. Um, they've been around since 1995 and they've really just been a pioneer in food justice and advocate for sustainable ag. Um, and they'll be supporting our train the trainer piece in this larger project. Thanks. So I'll, I'll hand it over now to Connor, who's going to talk a little bit more about Farm School NYC. Yes, thank you, Yolanda and Steve. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Connor. My pronouns are he, him, and I work with Farm School as program coordinator. Uh, I know just from looking at everyone else on the call, there's some other folks from Farm School. So if anyone would like to chime in and share as well, please feel free to, to jump in. Um, this picture is actually of our most recent cohort of students that we've accepted. And I know um, at least Chanel is also on this call. So hi, Chanel. Um, part of the history of Farm School, we started with collective roots from a number of folks and organizations based in New York City who really wanted to bring a comprehensive urban agriculture education program to New York City. Um, so starting around 2010, we started offering our certificate program and courses uh, that we have continued through. So we accept a new cohort of students into our certificate program each fall um, and also offer individual courses as well. And we really center our, our programming and our community around um, social and food justice, so looking at um, class and race and how all of these identities intersect when growing food as well. And we're really helping out with this program through helping support the curriculum development and outreach, um, so sharing about in our newsletters and with our communities and, and just really helping some of the training aspects of this program. Um, so Steve, if we can go to the next slide, something that we uh, really felt like we wanted to incorporate in the training is grounding it as much in popular education um, as we can. So I just want to, to be clear how popular education is really grounded in political struggle, class consciousness, and social transformation. And the term popular here refers more to something of the people and less of something that's like popular with people. And in particular, the community mushroom educator training really focuses on this aspect of like peer to peer methodologies and learning from and with each other. So some of the guiding aspects and principles of popular, popular education that we wanted to bring into this training is that everyone has uh, valid and valuable knowledge to contribute and really trying to create as much of a non-hierarchical learning system as possible. So understanding that the teacher is facilitating and also learning along with students um, in that process and really trying to bring as much hands-on student-centered learning opportunities into this training as possible. Uh, to balance out the digital components as well. So the image that we see on the right here with popular education is something that's called the spiral model in which um, 
it's a methodology of kind of starting with where people's experiences are in the present moment um, is number one, and then kind of moving through these different steps in order to look for patterns, introduce new information, um, and see how to apply that in communities um, moving forward, um, kind of coming back and reflecting on each point throughout the process. So it's a, the spiral model is an aspect of popular education to come back and uh, just really start with where, where folks are in their specific communities and make it a kind of a, a tailored training instead of a top-down training. It's supposed to be created with uh, the experiences of folks in the room for transformative social change. So if we can go to our next slide, Steve. Thank you, thank you. Um, this aspect is really manifest in this component called training of trainers. So it's, uh, it's really grounded in student-centered learning and um, yeah, based on uh, multiplying the impact of, of this grant and increasing educational capacity rather than just having one expert being able to, to teach about this information. So part of that will include uh, participants receiving a complete curriculum for the specialty mushroom production, along with a teacher's manual to facilitate the transfer of aspects from successful production um, into communities. So using the popular education approaches, um, there will be learning events reflective of the, the participants in the program's needs and those solutions to reflect those particular contexts um, that everyone is facing in their communities rather than just having some kind of broad spectrum approach to addressing things. Um, so, thank you. Right. So, hey Connor, are you there? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, okay, thanks a lot for um, reviewing popular education and training of trainers. So I'll just provide a brief overview of um, what the program will entail. So the requirements, uh, just so that you know up front prior to applying, um, is to participate in an online course uh, from March 23rd to May 11th. And that will entail roughly two to three hours of work per week. Um, so we are asking folks to really take that commitment into consideration prior to uh, applying. Also attending um, one of the three different two-day trainings that we'll be offering. We'll be offering them in New York City, Albany, and Philly. Um, you don't have to take them in all three cities, just need to choose one training to attend. And then also following up on action planning in small groups, um, that would include one to two hours per week. Um, and it will fluctuate throughout the year. So maybe some weeks will be kind of more hours per week and others uh, less. And again, the goal of this is so that participants gain confidence to teach this information to your communities um, and we'll be providing support along the way. So next slide. Um, as Connor mentioned, our approach is uh, popular education and that'll look like interdisciplinary and individualized study as well as group discussion, live and webinar workshop sessions and individual support. We'll be um, covering the following main competency areas. So Mycology 101, um, so that participants understand and feel comfortable teaching the basic life cycle of a mushroom. Um, we'll be covering the best practices for successful cultivation of mushrooms. Also understanding a bit about the economics because um, this grant is really focused on supporting people who want to grow and sell mushrooms. So production economics will be part of that. And lastly, um, teaching using popular education, using some of the tools that we'll learn about this methodology and really focusing on not just what we're teaching, but how we're teaching it. Next slide. So looking at the timeline, the application opened on January 10th and folks now have until the uh, until February 17th to apply. 
Um, so the application deadline is approaching. And then we'll let everyone know if they've been accepted or not into the training by March 13th. And then soon after that, we'll start the eight week online course. And the dates for New York City, Philly and Albany will be June 13th and 14th um, for New York City. Uh, Philadelphia will be July 18th and 19th. And then that last week in, um, that last weekend in August will be when we'll have the training close to Albany. And we tried not to um, conflict with the New Moon Mycology Summit, which is usually around that time. So tried to keep these dates as um, conflict-free as possible, but uh, we'll also be confirming where the exact location of the trainings will be um, once everyone is sort of notified if they're in the program or not. So next slide. So looking at the, um, the cost, we tried to make this training as accessible as possible. So this is why um, we sort of decided to go with a tiered pricing um, as a way of structuring our costs based on the budget of the organization that you're going to be accountable to. Um, so again, well, just to clarify, we want to make sure we want to ensure that what you're learning will be implemented in your community. So that's why we're asking folks to identify an organization that they will be accountable to. So depending on the size of that organization and the overall annual organizational budget, that will dictate whether or not you pay um, anywhere from $40 to $100 or from $20 to $80. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to email us. We'll include our contact information at the end. And also, if you're unclear whether or not your organization counts as um, an educational organization, also feel free to reach out as well. Next slide. So we showed um, a screenshot of what the application looks like earlier. Um, but again, it, everything is on the Cornell Small Farms website. Um, and so the first step is really to review all the materials and all the information about the program, like Steve mentioned earlier. Um, you'll complete and submit the application. Um, and that's pretty much straightforward. This is... Uh, a screenshot of what the Teachable website is. So for students that have taken any online courses through Cornell Small Farms, it was previously known as uh, Moodle. So we've kind of switched to a different platform that's called Teachable now. And through this platform, we'll be having, we'll be posting suggested readings and um, there'll be an online forum where you could ask questions and share relevant information about upcoming events. Um, and it's really meant to provide all the necessary background information so that you're ready to go um, during the in-person training. So, so that it's not, um, so that there's some familiarity with the, my, the basic my, uh, mycology of what we'll be talking about. One second. Okay, um, the step three will be basically attending one of the in-person trainings like we mentioned. We'll be hosting them in, in New York City, um, Philly, and Albany. And you don't have to be from those areas to attend. We're just anywhere, if you're in proximity to one of those cities, that'll be um, the training that you attend. And just to make a point about the certificate of completion, it is not to be confused with a certificate of accreditation. There's no um, accreditation that's really affi affiliated with this training program, but if you complete all the steps and attend the training, then you'll receive a certificate of completion at the end. And step four, so along with the in-person training, the online course, you'll also be required to attend to complete two mushroom related events in your community. And participants will receive ongoing support either online or in person as needed or over the phone. And the events could be either like a demo or an art installation or some type of mushroom inoculation party um, or a formal class or workshop. 
um, whatever most supports learning in your particular context and within your community. Um, <laughs> thanks for changing that, yep. And again, participants will receive forms and a spreadsheet for recording um, contact and, and demographic info for the participants of the events that they put on, um, just so that we can collect that data and kind of understand um, our impact and our overall reach. And just to make a point, this, these um, events don't have to look any particular way, it's just what makes the most sense um, in your in your particular community. And so from the 60 group cohort, we'll be selecting a smaller group, um, a select group of 16 people from both rural and urban areas that will go on to um, complete a project that's go on to complete the project based experience. So this will be, we'll be providing mentoring um, as you design additional programming specific to meet the needs of your community again. So rather than a one off event, let's say it's a longer term vision for you know, increasing competency in mushroom cultivation. Um, so this could be incorporating mushroom programming into an existing farmer education training or youth programming component um, to your farm or garden or organization. And we'll be providing some financial support um, for this around four to $500. And that would cover the cost of the workshop and, mater and project materials like handouts, um, spawn equipment and tools, whatever you need in order to get that um, longer term project up and running. Next slide. And again, um, our goal is to really build a cohort of educators to expand this educational capacity and to um, not just have one expert in the region, but have multiple experts that can um, be called to solicit it, so be called to um, teach future mushroom workshops and um, respond to requests around the region for additional programming. Next slide. Thanks. Um, so if you want to get in touch, um, my email is yg88 at cornell.edu. Uh, Steve's is sfg53 at cornell.edu. Again, you can visit our website, cornellmushrooms.org. We also have, um, we as in the Cornell Cooperative Extension, the Urban Ag Program has its own Instagram page. Our handle is urbanag.nyc. We'll be posting about upcoming mushroom opportunities on there as well. And Steve, I'll let you talk a little bit about the listserv if you want. Yeah, so in addition to these ways to keep in touch, uh, our listserv is an opportunity for anyone interested uh, in mushroom cultivation at any experience level or scale uh, to join our listserv. And that's a two-way conversation. So we'll use that email list to send out announcements and updates for this project and other projects associated with the specialty mushroom um, uh, project as a whole. And um, it's also an opportunity for anyone on the list to post uh, requests or questions or ideas and get feedback from other group members. So you can uh, just go to tinyurl.com backslash mushroom listserv and that gets you directly to that sign up. Although you can also find it by navigating through the website. And I believe with that, thanks for sharing all those pieces, Jelena. We'll, um, happy to answer any questions uh, via these avenues and also 